Kevin. What? I want to hear about it. You need to tell us about it. Tell you about what? You want to hear about it? I want to hear about it. Give me the details. You just okay. survived a Category 8 hurricane. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the squirrel attack. Oh, well, I, I want to hear about... Actually, let's talk about that first. <laughs> All right. I, I, uh, I'm coming to come clean with you guys. I have rabies. Again. This is the second time I have rabies. Wait, you, squirrel bait you, you or something? you actually have to go and get... like. What are you gonna? Are you gonna go to the doctor? No, because I read that squirrels don't have rabies, supposedly. But I bet I'm gonna be the first person to get it. You see that that bite on my fingertip? Yeah. Yeah, that's from a squirrel. Just the, just the tip. Just the tip. It didn't bite anything. Right else. there, you can see it. That teeth are like little like, chisels. That looks deep <laughs> enough for uh, to get rabies. <laughs> to transmit rabies, that's what I yeah. thought too. I. Uh, I you yeah. were showing me. We were playing. We were playing. Uh, uh, agar io or whatever was that yeah. when you were doing it or when were you doing it kevin's showing yeah. me i'm like watching this squirrel in the window and he's like oh look at this squirrel he's like feeding it snacks it come to the window he opens the window and he feeds oh, it snacks i think that's in the other podcast now yeah or maybe the just the podcast and then literally a day or two later he's like it bit me <laughs> <laughs> i thought we were friends why no, would you apparently. do this to me why did he apparently what did it, did it miss the food uh, I didn't have food. I'm like, you know what? I think we've bonded enough now that I don't need food for you to approach me. And I realized that I think my finger probably looks a lot like a peanut that's still in the shell. So when I stuck it in front of the squirrel's face, it kind of just grabbed my finger and went ha, ha, right on my finger. Like really hard, and, like bad hard. Well, I mean, it made I mean, me bleed, but it made me bleed. But after that, it ran away. I don't think it like got a taste it, for blood. Maybe I don't think it was trying to attack me. I think it literally maybe. It was either a warning or it thought I was food. I I had little pet rats for a long time. And when they got like really excited about food, they would sometimes either miss the food or think your your finger is food. And they would mm. bite too. Like they would never made us bleed, but they'd bite. And you could tell that they didn't mean to do it. Yeah. So I it could be. I did a podcast like this, by the way. Why? Yeah. You see my jawline? Does it look good? <laughs> like dreams? It does look It does. <laughs> It does actually. Mm -hmm. He has. He was showing the other side of his face, though, right? He was. <laughs> yeah, a little the suspicious. Joker, the Joker chin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, remember the episode of South Park with Eric Cartman uh, kills the the his uh, classmates' parents and turns them into chili and feeds them chili. Oh yeah. I think he. I think in that one he like trains the pony to like bite wieners by yes. putting a carrot in the pants. Kind of makes me think of uh, what you're doing to the squirrel. <laughs> Ace Kevin was just trying to make a consensual friend. relationship. I <laughs> you can't say it like that. <laughs> it, was, it was a symbiotic relationship. So yeah, I thought that like you know this has actually been going on for like a year, where the squirrels come up, and and I give them a peanut out the window and they run away, and so I've gotten them to come like onto my desk before, but they're usually they're still pretty skittish. But you know like this time the squirrels kind of like tweaking out. It was right after the hurricane. I don't think it could yeah, find it's food rabid. or something. Yeah, you know, like rabies all up in the air or something. And uh, yeah, I'm just like, oh, come here, you little squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. And it's like, Hah. you know, its teeth are like little chisels. It's, it like goes deep in there. It's we not like a. We had a, a pet squish. raccoon like a, for a very cut. short, or sorry, a pet a squirrel for a very short period of time uh, when I was a kid. Sorry, or like, like high school. Um, and it was like, as a baby, I, I don't remember exactly where. I think my sister must have found it, like on the ground. It was like clearly abandoned. We've had a couple of weird pets over the years, and uh, so you know, we like take it, kind of feed it. It would have died otherwise. You're not supposed to do this. It's gonna <laughs> die have, like, anyway. Permit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody is. Who isn't? Um, and it was very docile when it was young, but there's something about wild animals. <laughs> <laughs> For real. That when they are not young and maybe they're not like they're not neutered, they just kinda go buck wild the, when they yeah. get a little bit older. And that squirrel went from like a cute kind of what what felt like a good pet to just this horrible, 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 horrible. It's like a, it's like a squirrel, but it just took a lot of meth or something like that. Yeah. Like, it just was aggro and it would be like, you know, you used to be able to hold it and it would climb on you, and then it just immediately started biting. Like one day it just really like, switch and it would just you, if you put your hand in the cage it would just bite you um and so we just uh let it go 
So, because my because Reggie, who works with me, he had I don't know why he kept having squirrels fall out of his tree, and he was my neighbor growing <laughs> he's up. Because he's probably shaking the tree. <laughs> uh, so he it was he car. did what you did. He fostered the squirrels, and we have a bunch of memories. Like I remember, I'd go over there with a sweater and like you know do the T pose, and mm-hmm. the squirrel would just run around your stomach. Um, <laughs> It was the same thing. It was very docile. And then as it got older, it just kind of went crazy. But the difference is they kind of – the cage was never closed. Like if you kept mm. it ca- like closed, I think it just would go – I think it just goes stir crazy. Um, yeah. So it went crazy like that for a while. And when it was in the summer, they just left the door open so it would leave and come back. And then it's like one day just never came back. Like that's just – That either means he probably just – he just you – know, he had a family and he's off. I think it was like six months later – he came back with oh, okay. I think he was saying like he it's a classic where they'll come back with like in an owl turd. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. they, they they come back. I, I know that what was it Bunny? Someone was telling me about uh, an animal they fostered. Like six months or several months later or a year later, they will come back with I don't know, it's like bringing their family to where they grew up. Uh, right. Free and then they food. stay there. Give us that sweet, sweet food. They maybe want some food they don't know, and if you don't feed it, they kinda just like leave again. Uh, but right. it's like he, I think the other squirrel came back every few months, and then it just kind of stopped. Because I think it was every few months, he could, a, like, a squirrel would run up to him and jump on him. So he knew it was the, he knew he's it like, wasn't he's just, terrified. Like, is this a rabid squirrel? <laughs> yeah, it could have just been a random rabid one. <laughs> 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 he has fond memories of it. The problem is, there's a lot of squirrels that come to my window. There's at least like four or five different ones, and I think I know the one that bit me. But then there's one that came came up to my window. And let me just say this. The only reason people think that squirrels can't transmit rabies is because they usually die when they're attacked by an animal with rabies. You know, they usually suffer like a gruesome injury and die in the process. Well, one of the squirrels that comes to my window has a very gruesome injury on its side. It's got like this big open like gash like that. So I'm like... Uh, that's horrible. Yeah. You're like, so I'll like, uh, leave peanuts outside for you, but I'm not going <laughs> to leave the door open. <laughs> so I'm hoping kinda, that that wasn't, I don't looking. think that was a squirrel that bit me. Dude, being being cute and attractive really gets you far in life. Leaving Doing squirrels. Right. One one little open wound and Kevin's no longer feeding me peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to get tested for rabies? Or do you just find out when you're no, dying? No, they have to kill the animal. They have to cut its head off. Yeah, apparently they actually literally have to like go into the brain and like look, do like they do. sample. They do. So you just uh, went through um, a hurricane. How was that? Oh, yeah. No, I really wish we could have recorded a podcast in the middle of a hurricane because you said your internet did kind of work. It did work. My power kept cutting out. and But then I'm like, I could have just turned the generator on early because I have a whole yeah. house generator. But I never thought to do that. So if you turn the generator on, how does that work? Do you get like some sort of, is there like a, like a buzz or something to know when house power is back on? Like how do you know when to turn it on and off? It's automatic. So it can sense the voltage coming in. And then it'll like turn on the the generator if is there's no quick? voltage. No, that's well, I mean it's quick enough. It takes but like it, it can't but there's like there's still support. an interruption. Your computer, yeah, there's an interruption. Your computer will turn off. Mm. It's not like a backup. So you need a battery too. You need like a some sort of battery backup plus the generator. Yeah, I guess. How often is it turned on? Uh, like, it it runs like every week. It does a an automatic, but like, like a how, how often cycle. does it actually like you know serve its purpose? Like once a year. Oh yeah, maybe once a year. Once every actually, once every like two or three years, honestly, for like two days. Mm. So I can't. I I always think it's kind of silly how people rush out and they buy a generator like before or after a hurricane because yeah. it's like, what are you trying to? You know that it can't really run your. It can run your air conditioning or it can run your fridge. It can't run both. Mm. And it's like, there's nothing in your fridge that justifies spending three thousand bucks for a generator. Or you let your food rot. You live in the heat, but you've got video games and a computer that's true <laughs> you could earn everything standard. else let the food go bad i need to play that's what i'm saying I just let the play. food go bad yeah like yeah you, i mean i mean i don't know if you have a really good gaming rig that's like a fridge right right everything else is so out what am i gonna do eat what eat or game eat or game here's choose the, here's the thing the internet's also cut. Uh, it's yep. still work you said oh yeah mine does everybody else on my streets broken because you have a dedicated fiber line i do i have frontier and I'll, this is that's today's sponsor of this video not comcast N- not com we have an empty sponsorship <laughs> comcast eat my com ass <laughs> is that just because the fiber optic it's underground 
So it just can't. Or is, I think it's all. Is it all underground? I, I don't know. It's I mean, question. to to my house, like directly to my house, it's underground. Yeah. But I don't know about like on the road. Part mm. of me thinks that maybe the fiber optic is like better protected. In my head, I was just assuming a a, a hurricane kind of just rips everything apart. So if it's not affected, the wires probably weren't in the hurricane. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be underground. You're right. Because every single power line near me, there's a tree on it. <laughs> really? Like, oh, yeah. Well, how do you get power then? I don't know. Uh, I actually, there's a nursing home on my street. So I think oh. that I'm like a priority. So I got it back only three days after the storm. Oh, so you had That's three amazing. days, no power. Yeah. No, you had the generator. Yes, I had a generator. Well, yeah, and three days reduced it power. It's it yeah, uses natural easier. gas, so you're still kind of at like... Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, you don't have to fill it up. It's like, you know, pressurized natural hmm. gas. But if a gas line ruptures... But do, does her, do hurricanes mess with gas lines? Well, I mean, it shouldn't, right? Because I think, like, the pumps to pump the natural gas are powered by natural gas generators. So it's like this big backup system. Right. It's very but, incestual. Oh, yeah. yeah They're yeah, right. all <laughs> Like, it's actually kind of like more of a cannibalism thing, I think. So if we have a natural gas problem, but everyone's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's expensive, too. It costs like 60 bucks a day to run. And oh, that's just on natural like, gas. Yeah, yeah. And that's like just on the base, like kind of spinning and not really using that much power. Like it runs at a certain RPM that produces like 5,000 watts. And even if you're not using that, it's still kind of like. Yeah, you know. but it's not. It'll use more power when you do because, like, the generator will provide more resistance when the yeah. when you're consuming more power, right? Like, if you sort of turn a light on on a generator, you'll hear the generator bog down, and then it'll like adjust the fuel. Yeah, but so this like, like it just has a high idle. So hmm. what's the max? Yeah, but it'll, power it'll, it'll, it takes it. more natural gas to get it to idle at that speed while producing what? more. That's power. true. So yeah. it will consume. It will essentially inject more natural gas into. Unless, I mean, I'm assuming. Like it, uh, it's usually I don't know how it either. works. I don't know something weird. It's probably I was, I was watching the meter. I was like this, like looking at that <laughs> cubic feet spin around. Sixty dollars? Like. Is it actually sixty dollars a day? Are you sure? Yeah, it's pretty expensive. That's insanely expensive. Because like, how much does electricity cost? Like, I think my bill it's usually pretty high because of the maybe the computer and three D printers and, and air conditioning and stuff. But I think I pay like just under three hundred dollars a month for electricity. Yeah, pretty much the same here. So sixty dollars a day. 50 60 yeah so they charge you it's two bucks per oh my god it's the the worst system i've ever heard of so it's called you pay per therm it's, it's the florida eat my ass policy so, have you heard of a therm before i don't know it's a made-up unit it's 100 cubic feet of natural gas is one therm but then it's like adjusted for by btus because like i guess the chemistry of the natural gas can change so they have to figure out like how much heat is it actually providing so then there's like this weird multiplier attached to your how much cubic feet you use what is it mixed with water or something what the- i don't know it's like there's more farts in it there's more carbon yeah. monoxide in it that, i don't this, know that that is actually <laughs> ridiculous that you're paying it's like well if you want to be warm you got to pay more money for the gas that makes you warmer than this other yeah gas, which, i know like to be perfectly honest we're not sure why it makes you less warm but we charge <laughs> you less for it <laughs> like, we, like you just turn the switch on and shitty gas i do wonder about that because like what is the production of natural gas like, like i assume they have some purity checks or something uh like it can't, I know a little it can't bit be about that this. wildly different do you, do you guys have i think kevin might if anybody knows this be kevin. do you know where they keep natural gas where they where, <laughs> where, yeah, where they? does natural gas where does it it's where does it come from and where do they keep it well i know it occurs naturally so that's all i you got <laughs> the ground well. somewhere <laughs> yeah it's got oh i think they they also store it underground don't they they pump it back underground yeah, so oh. it comes out of the ground. It comes out. It's like I think it has to do with like oil wells, right? So they're like mm. pockets of natural gas. So they'll pull natural gas out of the ground, but they store it in. They store it underground. They they literally store it in the ground. Yeah. There's no tanks. There's no nothing. It's just giant like like fields, like a gas field. That it's like is they pump it like, underground, right? Yes, it's like a big pressure vessel, but it's like really, really deep underground. It essentially is like almost like imagine like a huge, huge, does huge, it, huge tank. Does it liquefy it again? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe, but they're they're quite literally. There's like just a giant pipe going into the ground, and there's pumps. They're they are pumping gas into the ground. Like and imagine digging escape. a huge hole, and you're just shoving gas into the ground. <laughs> like that's actually what like, they do fizzing up out of the ground actually 
didn't that happen in California yes. recently? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So that is a problem. So it can leak for whatever reason. But I think in it's, California, I'm not sure if the field. I like you say leaking. for whatever reason. It's almost like you're pumping a gas <laughs> underground. A gas and that's it, lighter but, than air. The, the thing is, it works. And so what I happens know, but is they, like, saying, they take these these empty oil fields. I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's something along this sort. I'm pretty sure it's an empty oil. But not field. just local. F- yeah. <laughs> no, and so like there was a pocket that held stuff for a long time, and they're mm. like, well, why don't we just the crap use people? the pocket that held stuff for a long time to hold more stuff? And I don't think it's like a giant cave or anything. I think it's literally just like probably fissures in the rock and stuff, and it kind of like ends up just like coincidentally because it held the oh yeah the substance for so long, mm. it is just like naturally kind of sealed off. But I just like how I like how Will says just for some reason the gas came up. It's like he, it's who could have known this gas that's lighter than air would come up from the ground so, after no, we put it No, but I don't there. even think it's an air thing. I think it literally like it's under so much pressure. Wait, is natural gas lighter than air? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. I, yeah, it might be, but it's not because of that. It's because it's under no, no. I, I get your point. Pressure. I'm just saying it's just it's just yeah. the, the whole situation sounds kind of funny. But like there were leaks and mm. people were claiming that they were having ailments because of it. And this is in Southern California. And apparently, I don't know if it was leaking through the field or if it was leaking through like access points or something. But like it's so far down that I, I guess it just is incredibly difficult for it to actually come up. But I'm looking it up and the uh, I think the Santa Clarita, the one in Santa Clarita my friend used to work at, it says it's 600 acres. So there's essentially just this really big like kind of lake sized piece of land that underneath it is this weird like porous mineral pocket that they can shove natural gas into. So they and they mm. figured this out like someone at some point had this idea. Imagine like you work somewhere and you're like, "All right, boys, how do we how do we store all this natural gas?" And they're like, what if we put tanks above the ground? And they're like, what if we just sh- pumped it into the earth? I was going to say, the guy goes, if we, can, if we can pump it out, we can pump it back in. But I think the logic is maybe, if I had to guess, maybe the oil field or the, the gas field had gas in it already. And they're like, well, if gas is coming out, if we can sort of take gas from the field. Yeah, exactly. And like the gas has been here for a long time. Why couldn't we just shove gas back into it? <laughs> right? Like... If you stop pulling gas and you, you plug it up yeah. it, and it's not leaking out anywhere else, why can't you just put more in? <laughs> that has to be how it happened. There's no other way. I wonder if they ever overfill the field and it blows up. Because isn't like crude oil and stuff, it's under pressure, right? They don't really have to pump it out. I think it's like forces it's yeah. itself out. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Wait, Kevin, on the topic of crude oil, I really want to buy some crude oil. Oh, yeah, I, I've seen can, that. Right? You can buy it. I haven't it? seen where you can buy it. Just buy a whole barrel of it. Yeah, buy, that's buy, the thing. Go, they, on, they, go on Robin Hood, they don't buy sell a barrel it. of oil, or, and then ask uh, where you put your shipping information in. So the, the I think I've asked people before. I was just like talking about it. They're like, yes, you have to buy a 55-gallon drum minimum. And then everyone goes, the last thing I want in the world is 55 gallons of crude oil. They're like, if you spill that like anywhere, it's just you're screwed. <laughs> the worst thing ever. You should just do like a, a video where you're like, um, like pets, like animals versus crude oil. Yes, one of those channels. Oh, and you just be like, yeah, like a kiddie pool. You put oil in it and you just throw like a hamster in there. And just see no. What so here's a fun fact: How do they keep track of how much gas is in it? Also, and by fun fact, this is what I learned from my friend who worked for the gas company. And I'm not going to put my neck on the line to say it's true. But I think it's true because it makes sense. My assumption would just be pressure. I don't know. Like, there's a little spinny thing in there. I think it's quite literally gas in. Wait, they keep track of how much gas is going in. Yeah. But that's how they know. I'm okay. That's, that's how they know oh, how much gas is in Oh, I get it. So they don't really keep track of how much nope. is coming out. Just Well, they do both. So they put gas into it. And they yeah. pull gas out. And so if you put, you know, how, how is gas? So if you put a therm in and you pull a therm out, <laughs> now we're you're now the, at net zero. We got the lingo. So there's yeah. no pressure or anything. You just have to count how much gas goes in. So if you do have a leak somewhere, you have no idea. So do you think like, if, if you put in like one therm and you get out 0.9, like that's not good, right? But once you well, put you in, would know if you put in one therm well, and you put out 0.9, you would just assume that you have an extra 0.1 in the reservoir. No, I'm yeah, saying it's like they're not oh, counting how yeah, much but, gas is actually leaving. Yeah, Only they have no gas. idea how yeah, much so, gas is in the field. But I'm saying, but it field. could be leaking out. Yes, 
but they did, yeah. they wouldn't know unless they were able to detect it somehow which i don't really care about as long as as long as the gas that is past my meter that i pay for it isn't leaking <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how much leaks out into the environment <laughs> before the meter. <laughs> Anyways, and then uh, the the smell. You know the smell. I mean, I feel like that's kind of a meme, right? The smell that natural gas smells like. Yeah. Is an additive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have a tank of it, and I think they were saying like every time they do anything with that tank, if they fill it up or anything, because it's like there's. I think there was literally one tank from what I remember. There was one tank of that stuff. And that would last them for, like, quite a while for all the gas in the, the area that it supplies. And it was, like, a pretty small tank. Um, but I think anytime they fill it or do anything, it just, like, any, any you know, any little pocket. Like, and you know how, like, you always lose gas when you're doing connections and stuff? It's kind of like that spaceship. You got that, the room, what do you call that, the, where you go in to the yeah. bay and it closes both doors. The lock, the airlock. You know, when you're doing connections of gas and stuff, there's always, like, that lock where there's, like... As the seal disconnects, there's still a little bit of gas. And apparently that, even just a tiny bit of that stuff, just will r- make the whole area smell like crap. Yeah, I think it's ethyl mercaptan that they always use. That uh, that smells good. Yeah, it's like apparently it's so potent that the concentrated form they keep on site just is like the like worst. Like you can't contain it. You can't contain it. Like it's yeah. so, cause, it, because it, it's that's like what they use. You can smell it in parts per trillion. Yeah. Uh, I looked it up. Because, uh, yeah, merca- it says... It just says mercaptan here. Uh, ethyl mercaptan, I don't know. It's usually, it's about, it's it's one PPT. It's close to like parts per trillion, but it's like on the edge. So it's probably, it's about one PPB. So like you are getting to the, like the parts per trillion. That's insane. I remember I couldn't, I tried to look it up. I couldn't find the number there, but it was something stupid where they're like, I think it's like they put a liter. It, I mean, you can just do the math if it's a parts per billion, right? So if you take like about a liter, you then you can put it in, I guess, a billion times. It's like a billion liters, a billion and one liters. Well, it'd be, a, yeah, I guess. You like said it was almost almost a billion or a trillion, almost a trillion. So maybe. Well, like, if it's one ppb, I guess you just do one liter. Billion. Assuming it's it's not really one gram. It's hard because they're all different so you, densities and stuff. Like it's oh, hard yeah. to do. Is it is it based on a, on mass or is it molar? Because parts per parts per million and parts per billion, it's just mass. So like one ppm is mm. just like one gram in a million grams. Mm. So okay. like when you divide it, it's just a unitless like thing. So it'd have to be like if you had a a, a kilo of this stuff. Well, I mean, I guess you could gas. do liter. I, I in my I think it was I just in my head was always gram per gram. I don't know. I don't know. The problem is gas liters of gas is like a volume and I don't know what the density is and doing all these calculations. We don't have time for this. Yeah. It's nerd shit. <laughs> Either way, I, I was using like one to 200 cubic feet of natural gas per hour. Wait, so it was how like much? Two to four, oh. oh, wow. Two, one, yeah, okay. 100 to 200 hmm. cubic feet per hour. That's a lot. So that comes a really shitty generator. Two, no, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> don't don't install this generator. 60 bucks a day for a couple of days once a year is not that big of a deal. No, it's like not. that sucks ass, but the only thing that sucks more ass is not having power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Like I was compl- I couldn't complain about it to my neighbors. Like I was, you know, oh, like oh, oh you man, have, do they not know? have generators? No, like not at first. I think two people went out to buy one at the time, and then that's somebody a, had that's one. That's probably the worst time to buy a generator. Yeah, I mean, I was at Home Depot like the day before the storm hit, and there was twenty. Two or twenty-three pallets of generators, each with six generators on them. Oh, dude, Home Depot's like, on their egg. I, I just want to quickly yeah. fact check myself. And they were like bringing them out that day. Just quickly, like, so, and then we can move on after. Sorry, yeah. the uh, you can detect the mercaptan in parts per billion, but it's in parts per million in the gas. And at least as mm. one website says, it ranges between zero and ten. But I found something else that actually says in propane, it's twenty-five ppm which is about 1.5 pounds of ethyl mercaptan for every 10,000 gallons of liquid propane. That's a lot of propane. So like 1.5 pounds is like probably like a li- it's like it looked like probably like 2 liters or something. Yeah. Like a, just a 2 liter bottle into 10,000 gallons. One of the one of the things they had at the the oil field storage that I didn't get to see it working, but I thought was kind of cool. They have a giant like gravel area, and I was, it's like it looks really weird. Like, what is this giant gravel like pit for? So they have like 
they have like pipes under there that they'll leak natural gas and they'll light the whole field on fire. Nice. Hmm. To learn how to put out natural gas fires that are sort of oh, like dispersing through the ground. Because the problem is like you can't put it out here because it's not like the, the source isn't here. Yeah. The source is way down below and it's sort of bleeding out everywhere. It's like one of those fancy fire pits you can get from yes. a hardware store with the lava rocks. <laughs> right. So you'd have really to like it. probably put it out by like sweeping across it and keeping it from reigniting behind you. Oh, That's yeah. That's a nightmare. Like a leaf blower or something. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just let it burn. I learned a lot that day. Filling that was an interesting. Sand? A nuclear bomb. Yes. yes. That solves everything. <laughs> I'd be lighting fires on purpose just to, just to be able to blow them up. <laughs> oh, no, another fire. <laughs> I mean, is there any reason why we shouldn't nuke a hurricane? As, I a, man think of, that as a man of science, I think yeah, we should try. As a man of science, but I also do think it's our God-given right. You know, you've got science and religion working together to throw a That's nuke true. into a hurricane. It's a synergy. Yeah. If I was God, I would I would be disappointed if, in you if you didn't throw a nuke into the hurricane. Oh, he's that, probably like, you're so close. You're so close yeah. to locking the secrets. Nuke the that's, hurricane. That's <laughs> the bet. It's like, how long until they nuke a hurricane? <laughs> 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 There's a lot riding on our shoulders. <laughs> you know, the, the weird thing about gas that I never really thought about is I've just been buying a bunch of helium. I, I don't know if I told mm. you guys, been, I've been trying to buy disposable tanks of helium. So I got some disposable helium tanks. You cannot turn helium into a liquid very easily. Oh, yeah. And the consequence of that is it's very hard to put helium in a tank in meaningful quantities. Yeah. I bought a little hydrogen tank once, and I was so angry. I mean, it said right on it how much was in it. But yes, it's like, but if, you're, if you have you, you think no, CO2 no, no. cartridge, right? Yeah, if you think CO2, you're like, oh, oh you're I got talking CO2 cartridge. This well, one, it said like 56 yeah. liters, and it cost me so much money. And then... You don't realize 56 liters, I filled like like a full balloon. Four balloons. It's like, yeah, it's like four or five balloons, and I was just or maybe, done. Maybe I don't, even less. I think it, I, I think, think I, it might I was be like I was able balloons. to do like five or something. It was enough you, that you like, didn't blow them up as big as you could. No, I, would, I was just getting yeah. started, and I was like, oh, you know, I got a few to waste. I tell my friend, you want to blow it up for fun? The tank's empty. I'm like, that costs yeah. $300. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. after that, I got my, yeah. I, I pulled my, I, fixed my little hydrogen generator and then that was the greatest thing that i ever got oh that was hydrogen was that like research grade hydrogen or something it was just a convenient oh, yeah. in like the little bottle yeah. but then i have a little generator yeah. that i got for like 200 dollars that works. It just makes hydrogen yeah. all day how yeah. does it compress it though oh it doesn't it just like spits it out and go up to 60 psi so you just put a balloon on the end and it just fills a balloon oh right right. right. so it's just made yeah so time. i was i was like i was trying to i was trying to figure it out because these tanks are like 2500 psi mm. and they're small they're like big co2 cartridges and the lecture um, model size, I think. Is yeah, yeah I, I haven't got I think they're like five inches long. Huh? Yeah, oh, that's, that's pretty so small, right? Uh, it is. It is small, you know, and it's but, you know, <laughs> you got it's some not small about models. the size. It's about how little gas is. Inside <laughs> yeah. Uh, disappointing. And in, in, I think from every angle, I realize this because the CO2 cartridges are like eight to nine hundred PSI, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why is the helium twenty five hundred PSI? Just because they have. Yeah. To, they, and it's. Yeah, it's just because they it. have to. They, yeah, otherwise that is yeah. literally to get, get one to get the most liquid, gas. They have liquefies. to go up to the highest pressure that realistically you can do, which is in like that scuba tank range, which mm. is like around three thousand psi. And so with CO two, you don't, you can't put higher pressure in there because if you put higher pressure in there, like it just turns, it's just liquid yeah. at that point. So you can only just fill it up with liquid. Yeah. That, to me, that's so that's so cool. Like the yeah, fact that you can beautiful. get so much gas like 16 grams of gas into a tiny cartridge because it's liquefying and then gases that don't liquefy as easily without insane pressures you're just you can't store them easily no what are you trying to do with helium though i'm just trying to blow some balloons up in a in a way <laughs> <laughs> okay cryptic i'm trying to make a phone case that can inflate balloons <laughs> when you drop it <laughs> Like a little, like a little, uh, like an emergency getaway. <laughs> you could, I have some, yeah. I, I have some sodium azide. You could rig that up. So that you uh, that's what's in airbags, right? How do you wait? How do you ignite that? Wait, how, okay, wait, 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 wait. How do you wait? I want to, I want to know about this. What, when you say you have some, what does that mean? I have an amount that 
is scary. It, where did you that did is you not, buy not it? legally required. To I report. obtained it from an undisclosed resource. <laughs> okay, so so you have it in the same form that it comes in. It's just a powder. Like the the is it powder or is it pellets? It's just a powder. You can probably how do you ignite it? If you here's the thing. I don't know much about it, and yeah. uh, that's it's, good. It's toxic too, so I just kind of like. Yeah, that's I, exactly. That's great for when one goes off and right in your face. It's it's pretty like it's hella toxic, isn't it? Oh, it's toxic when it's it's hella toxic. Yeah, actually. Yeah, it's like it, yeah. you have to be very careful working with it, and uh, then it can also blow up. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested in trying that. I wonder if there's a way I can get like a small quantity of it instead. Because like right now, I'm doing everything with high pressure gas, which arguably probably is like just as dangerous for a slightly different reason. Um, guess how much money? So I got these ox. I got these helium tanks shipped to me. Guess how much money shipping cost? I did. I overnighted them, but it still was way more than I would have guessed. Well, how, Wait, how, how we need to know how some. How big were the tanks? Yeah. So I have I have these uh ninety five cc tanks, and then I have uh I got some slightly bigger ones that are like maybe I don't I don't. She said they're like twelve inches. It's meant for party balloons. It's like a party and balloon thing. Are they high pressure? Um, yeah, they're 2,500 PSI. Man, so it probably sh- had to ship hazmat overnight. Yeah, I had to pay $40 just for the paperwork for the, the DOT uh, hazmat. I'm guessing it was like, did it have to go on a plane? I From where? From where? God, it was probably like From the East Coast to West Coast. 500 bucks? I would say 267 it's 350 bucks. Who's closer? Oh, man. And of course, of <laughs> course, because I'm trying to like get it quickly, you don't get the price until they actually do it, right? And so I'm looking mm. at this invoice, and I literally spent just as much. I literally, yeah. I, all I needed was like a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff, and the total invoice that they sent me after I gave my credit card was like $1,000. I'm sitting there like, I just... I need to find. I need to find like, the. You know, in that situation, it. I say, "What would Mr. Beast do?" And I just I hits buy. Buy it, out. Wait, buy it hey, twice, wait. Kevin. What do you? So, what do you? What is your take on this situation? I was looking to buy a very special gas, and the only place at the time that I could find. Bell Delphine it, farts. <laughs> no comment. Uh, <laughs> no, I was looking to buy it, and the only place that I found was Alibaba, and this was like I think it was. A, year or two ago a year and a half ago when like shipping prices from china were skyrocketing so it was just a tank like just a small i don't know tank or i i I don't know exactly the quantities but it was it probably would have been like a foot and a half long weighed like several pounds the guy it was so expensive for shipping the the tank itself would have been a few hundred bucks I think it was so expensive for shipping. The guy said, it's better if we just don't sell it to you. And I said, I had to ask him for the shipping quote. And I think he told me he was embarrassed. He, he didn't want to send it. I, I, was it. I think for the small tank, it was $3,000. Was this ship for it? Or something like that. Like on a ship? No, or because like- he goes, because it's such a specialized gas, he's like, we cannot send it by ship. It must be overnighted on a plane with hazmat or something. Oh, my God. And I was like, uh, and he was, and, and he, then he contacted me. I talked to him like, I'm like, I'll let you know. Like the day later, he's like, the price went up $500. <laughs> he's like, make your decision quickly. Because I didn't buy it. And I found like an actual, um, like su- supplier in the U.S. I, yeah, exactly. I told you about the the wax. I mean, the wax thing I did a while ago, where it cost oh, yeah. five hundred dollars to ship fifty five kilograms of this polyethylene mm. wax. I mean, fifty five kilos yeah, is just like pretty hefty. It is. It's a big thing, and he like I didn't need the whole damn thing, but they just he didn't even like the seller didn't even charge me for the wax. He gave me the wax for free because I was like sampling it, which I was. It ended up not being what I needed, but. It was, I think it was 500 bucks. And I just remember being like, well, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> make the sponsor pay for it. Where did you buy it from? Like, where were they located? It lo- was, was AliExpress, this- I think. Or no, uh, dude, I, don't, I went, it was a whole freaking rabbit hole. Like, I was on YouTube videos, you know, like Chinese people, uh, Chinese people, <laughs> Chinese, Chinese sellers will like make weird YouTube videos that are like, contact us on our WeChat for if you would like to buy this machine that like puts skin on hot dogs, like just weird <laughs> machines that you can find on YouTube. The Earthworms Skinner. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 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 yes. That is that's exactly what I'm talking about. Did you see that video I posted, Nigel? No. <laughs> it was 
I think it was a short, maybe. It was an earthworm skinning machine. It was the worst thing I've ever yeah. seen in my life. It literally was a machine. They like they he, were like, putting these worms little night into crawlers, it. drops them in, and it like fillets and it, like, them open. Yeah, it like fillets them open. Would you share this on, was it on the Discord? Too. It's like, voom, voom, voom. was it for bait or something? Like I have no. All I know is it gave me no. nightmares. No, because I read the comments and he said, "Oh, it's a good herb for el- for health." Like he called them a, a, an herb, as in like. Chinese medicine. What he meant to say was an absolute thing. disgusting nightmare. Also, why do you have to cut them in half? Why can't you just eat them? Where, where, where is this video? Uh, I'll see if I can find it. You know when they say you can cut a worm in half and it'll like survive and grow like two worms? <laughs> not if you cut it in half <laughs> this not, way. Not if it's a long way. <laughs> not hot dog style. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine being in like the room where you're like, it might be in uh, the Dumpster Zone channel, a meme channel called the Dumpster Zone, where yeah. just anything uh, I, just... I think I posted it too. It's from July. No, it was Here pretty it recent. Oh, you found it? Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. I want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to watch it again. No, it's like, it's oh, not even gruesome. It's just horrible. Where are you going to share it? All right, I'm going to... Right here. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Nigel is about to watch a video oh my God. of a machine. Just, sold just, just by the thumbnail. A company. And it's called Earthworm Peeling Machinery. Good machinery and good tools to, to save. save time it's and like effort. Good music, too. If you want to avoid it, that's the title of the I'll, video. I'll describe it as Nigel watches it. I'll try to verbally describe it. Okay, ready? So the first frame is these very, very just so large. We, we, just we're saying what, uh, we'll earthworms. play it on three. Yeah, we'll play in a second. I'm just describing the first okay. frame because it's going to okay. go fast. I got to describe what the odd. So there's like this little like kind of stainless steel tray. And in the middle of it is like a red funnel bolted to it. And there's like some water pouring into the funnel, like a little spout of water, I think, to kind of keep. It's like a water. It's a whole operation. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to go down a water slide without water. And <laughs> you don't want to put your worms into the worm <laughs> slicing machine. <laughs> the wormhole. So like. These worms look to be about six inches no, long, no. maybe. No, they're longer they're like than a, that. Yeah, like, I would say they like might be eight like eight inches, inches long. They're, they're big boys. And they're maybe like the size of like a pencil, like a little thicker than a pencil. They're girthy. And uh, all right, so ready to play? Say yeah. on three, I set right? The, I set the scene. Three, two, one, play. All right, so he picks one worm up and he just shoves it down the front <laughs> and it like ejects the it's worm so out really fast. quickly. But when you when you take a close look, yeah, he just he's just piling. He's picking them one what by one. What kind of system is this? And now he's like scraping. Oh, they're like they're clearly like completely cut cut in half. I have no idea why. But why does he and like? It's I don't even want to describe this. This is horrific. This, I just know has four thousand views. It was posted at the beginning of September, and it is it is it is it's a video you can. It's a video that exists. <laughs> no, but there's so many. Que- they're still moving after. But there are so many questions I have, like. He doesn't even have something to collect the worms. It flies out and just splats yeah. on a dirty bucket. Well, he pulled them out of the dirt, so what's wrong if they get no, a but more dirt? I don't them? understand. And then he just, then when he was like sliding yeah. it around with his fingers, yeah. like why? There's, there's a bucket full of water yeah. under the machine, but it's actually just hitting the side of the <laughs> bucket and smacked, falling out of the concrete floor. It just, <laughs> it just smacks the bucket like and piles up. Like why? Like nothing about this makes any sense. Like, he has this whole setup and operation and it just flings it into the side of a bucket. So long story short, it was through a very similar process that I found this man who sells wax. <laughs> Except it was it was a machine about how polyethylene wax is made or how how they make the pellets, not a, not a video about um like <laughs> a worm what to do with it thing. yeah uh so that's been my that was my i think uh, in most interesting oh uh <laughs> speaking of buying things from china i think we should buy that machine i don't really want to say what it is because i feel like we should talk about it if we do end up getting it um but what is the that machine, machine that where dreams are made you know the machine i'm talking about you always see it it's like a, a medical machine from China. It's like a white, kind of looks like the the, dro- the um, drones from Yeah, I know uh, what you're Half-Life, talking about. Or sorry, I know what you're Portal. talking about. And it has like this pink little eye in the middle of it. I, I have literally no clue what you're talking about. I think it's probably better that way. You know how when you go on Alibaba, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you have an account on Alibaba and you sign in through that account and you like basically click on any item, you will get a message from that seller or other people that supply this machine. They'll yeah. Like, Hi, I noticed you're looking at laser welders. He, like, may I offer you this laser welder? Guess what happened, Will? After you posted that, after you posted that machine, I started getting quotation 
offers for it. <laughs> oh, because you clicked on it. Oh, While yes. I was signed into my account. You should you could probably opt out of those. I like it better this way. Just tell me what machine it is. It's the 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 ah. It's like it looks like the uh it looks like the turret from from Portal, except it's got like this horrible like pink thing. And you, you've never seen the like viral videos of this thing just like reciprocating? No. Meow meow. I don't go, I I don't go on websites until you like sent that. Me the link. What? No. Yeah. Are you, are you guys... Are, no, all right. Well, now I just... Now I feel like I've <laughs> You're a, outed myself. You've been outed as the pervert that you are. <laughs> no, that's Alan. Alan's the pervert. I can't steal his title from him. <laughs> I, I've... Uh, I do want to buy more stuff. I was thinking of like... Like I, I kind of like the idea of like having set amount of money and doing a video where it's like I spent, you know, like you you spend money on Wish, or yeah. on um like AliExpress or like sort of any one of these websites where you just like no bars hold or whatever you say about that. Um, you just buy things. You just have you have a budget and you just buy things. And you're like look at look at like what do I see that tickles my fancy that's sort of within the budget and I just buy stuff. And like, what kind of horrors can you end up with? What truly like just awful, awful things can you buy from? There's a lot. There's a lot of. There's awful a lot, you man. Buy. Like I remember scrolling Wish, and it would it it, it it it's like TikTok, right? They like look at what you look at, and then they recommend more stuff like that for you. And of course, the stuff you click on is like the weird stuff where you're just like, of what course, is oh, this? yeah. And I have some screenshots of like the just. The most bizarre thing you've like ever seen. It's almost like perfect marketing. Like they just like it is absolutely perfect. Like one yeah. of them was. I mean, it's all like it's always just like weird, you know, like sex stuff. And one really, of them was my like, wish always becomes like illegal full auto machine gun modifications <laughs> if I browse it long enough. <laughs> I remember seeing like like Bitcoin coins, like a, like real Bitcoin coins, where it's just a coin oh, with yeah. like the Bitcoin it's like logo. And it's like did. why are they, who is selling this? Who's buying this? I don't. What I want to buy are some of those vehicles they have on Alibaba. That would be good too. I've seen some reviews of them, like the three thousand dollar like yeah. truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is a three thousand dollar truck? A brand new three thousand dollar yeah. truck. It's a golf cart with a body kit. Golf carts are more than three thousand dollars. Yeah, though. I don't know how they do golf it. Golf carts are like can be like like ten grand. They're expensive. I just bought a laser welder from AliExpress. Actually, I told you about this like yeah. two months ago, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, should I get? Should I pay more for like the the air freight shipping, or should I have it? You know, go go on a boat through it first. It's been at the Panama Canal for two weeks. It just got through, but still. Two weeks. Wow, I, it's better than being stuck on the actual boat for two weeks. So imagine a human being on, like stuck on the on a boat at the Panama Canal. That's Canal. true. Just like sitting there, like I look yeah. at it, it, just like kind of spins in circles around the anchor mm -hmm. for two weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. How much was the cost if you were to just ship it, like uh, by air? Oof. It was like two thousand extra hmm. by air, mm. and by ship it was eight hundred bucks. Still kind of expensive, but I'm sure all of that cost is like getting it from the port to my house. Anyone who builds stuff and works with kind of, you know, like heavy machinery, like anything you do, like this stuff, like buying stuff is so expensive. Like buying all this hardware for the helium tanks. Like, first of all, I spent a thousand dollars on the hardware, right? So it's like the tanks plus the hardware plus like, you yeah. know, some valves and crap like that. You cannot get this stuff any cheaper. And if you do get it cheaper, do you really want to be buying like a $5 valve that hooks up to a 2,500 PSI tank? Yeah. I mean, I'd be okay with that. I know, right? Like, how do you explain that to your boss when, like, the whole plant goes down? And it's because, oh, you decided to buy a regulator off of Wish. <laughs> if they had one, I probably would have. And I'm glad they didn't have a $5 valve or I couldn't I just find spent one. I 800 bucks to get yeah. a bunch of these knives laser cut. Yeah. Dude. They were 16 bucks each. Wow. You know, like, this I, is yeah. less than a dollar worth of material. I think that's one of my biggest frustrations, just sort of on <laughs> online in general. It's like, you look, like, anywhere... Where, you know, like the BattleBot subreddit used to be notorious for this. I don't know if it's still bad. Um, people just, they, they have no idea how much it costs to build a machine mm. like this from scratch. You know, oh, it's yeah. like you can go to Walmart and buy something like a TV for a couple hundred bucks because it's mass manufactured. Like if you have to start, you know, cutting into a block of aluminum, like you're not paying for the part. You're paying for the entire block. 
Yeah, you're paying and for then the, the time. Machine. Yeah, and then the time. Like, like God forbid, anyone that does BattleBots, nobody or very few people are going to pay to have parts machined because that is like a monumental cost. Like, I've yeah. had stuff machined at old jobs, like even by hand. You know, like I, I had some like pulleys and stuff machined for this this project years ago when I was working a real job. Not this fake YouTube crap. Uh, and it's like it was like hundreds of dollars. It was like, like maybe four hundred bucks just to machine this like plastic pulley with a bunch of. A plastic you know, a bunch pulley. Of different yeah, a Delrin pulley. Yeah. And it's like, because wow. the guy, the machinist is doing it by hand. He's not doing any CNC stuff, so you can only really send him stuff that he could do by hand. And yeah. he's still charging a fortune because it takes him like probably a quarter of his day, unless he's really good, like maybe faster. And so, you know, I'm kind of like sometimes like hesitant to share, like even the fact that the helium tanks cost, you know, like each helium oh, yeah. tank is 20 bucks. I, I think I'll say that in the video. But I'm I'm afraid to sort of say like the whole thing. You know, I think it's interesting. It's really interesting to see like how much it costs to make stuff. But when you're buying weird industrial crap like this, because nobody's yeah. like, where do you get disposable high pressure helium tanks? Like they don't exist. Like you have to go to a weird place. Yeah. You don't like, go. That you is don't a get problem. a balloon tank. Yeah. That's like a problem that you would only have if you're like building satellites or something. Yes. Yeah. You know, like some sort of weird like you need like a like a supply of helium gas, but you're not going to use that much of it. And you need it to last, you know, like so much you need, it, you know, whatever you need it to run for 30 minutes. You need it to run for yeah. a couple of weeks using so much every week. And like this is what you use. Um, so I don't know if you mentioned already. Could you you could buy a big tank of helium and just fill the small ones, right? Yes. But that would be like more hardware. And now you still have like, do you know how much helium costs in a big tank? Like you could probably yeah. rent it and they would charge it's you like for 80, 80 bucks for a 60 cubic foot tank of helium. Yeah, I've got it. I've gotten it before. Are you, are you sure? How long ago was that? Four years. It's gone up a I lot, think that it, but it would be a few hundred I think bucks a tank, probably. I think it would be like $500 for, for like an actual, uh, like a helium tank for welding or whatever. Even like a low quality helium yes. would be really expensive. Apparently, helium is like degradation of uh, like radioactive. Mm. It's a finite resource. Yeah. Well, kind yeah. of. And you can't, it's like oil almost. Like It's like very difficult to kind of obtain it in these quantities. It's not something that, like it's probably something that can be obtained, but not in the quantities and in the, in the way that sort of makes it so that you can fill balloons up with it. Could you imagine? It's like, yeah, you know, we need to pull oil out of the ground and make gasoline so that we can like transport things. You're like, yeah, that's great. And they're like, okay, but we're also going to like take this non-renewable resource that's sort of next to it and we're going to make decorations with it. But that's the, the, that's the thing that's really crappy about helium is that, it has practical use like as yeah it's used in welding yeah no it, i mean exactly it's used in welding and even as like uh people do when they liquefy it like it is used in um i think like wow, some medical can, equipment and stuff 20 bucks for per liquid liter of helium that's pretty really? cheap yeah but Where? to be fair kevin to be fair i tried what? to buy helium a while ago uh from a gas supplier in in my area and i think he was just like uh i he was he was asking what i was using it for and he goes it's really hard to get like you it's even like the price is there but they might that might not be what they'll actually sell yeah, it for they're probably trying to save it for like a, a client that they need to be reliable for well he was just saying i think he was like are you gonna be filling balloons with it and i was like no he goes okay because we won't sell it to you for that and i was like yeah. oh okay I think that they probably need to be able to consistently provide to their mm -hmm. like more yeah like welders and, and... So they won't yeah exactly yeah um, so, party balloons are so know. important I... though I know we should just use hydrogen for party it's... balloons just every every grocery store that sells helium tanks the low pressure helium tanks they just replace all the helium with hydrogen I agree hydrogen's the balloons float better it's vastly renewable I don't see any problem with this. Yeah. When I used it in a video, I got a lot of people like, you're, you're using helium for this? <laughs> what did you like, use? Don't, don't you know? Oh, yeah, because you filled uh, plastic. Filled like things, an air. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like an air. I shot stuff with it. Mm. Kevin, yeah. I can't believe you. You're using helium for that? I can't believe you've done this. I really want to make liquid helium. <laughs> I think you. How do you. How. I think it's. How do you do that? It's very hard, right? I think it's. A, um, honestly, I think it just nitrogen? costs money. Sorry, Kevin. Can you use liquid nitrogen to liquefy helium? No, it's that... not even close. Um, you no, have to get... Because okay. liquid helium is like four off absolute zero or something. 
uh, and liquid nitrogen's like eighty. Uh, I think you. Oh, have you seen the video of the like guy that had liquefied helium, or he had like yeah, liquefied helium in a ceramic glass, like a ceramic cup, and then he cooled it down. Like once the ceramic cup cooled down to the temperature that the liquid helium was at, it just flowed through the ceramic. Oh no, yes, that was just, crazy. I actually yeah, never saw that video because right like there's not many. There aren't many good videos of liquid helium. What what pressure would helium be at room temperature if you put it in a vessel? Like if you wanted to liquefy helium at room temperature and contain it in a vessel, oh, what would the pressure be? Probably like just look it 40, 50,000 PSI or something. What's what's twenty five atmospheres? Twenty five. Twenty five atmospheres PSI. is like twenty k PSI. No, that's not right. This says is that standard true? atmospheres is for yeah. That, I, I'm not. Because I'm thinking, like, you know, if, if it's 900 psi to get no, liquid CO2, completely wrong. 25 atmospheres is 360 psi. Yeah, I don't think I, I think that that's whatever I, I, searched, I destroyed whatever searched, my math. Your credibility. Yeah, it's is gone. absolutely shattered. Don't trust me. Like, under I a think high this is that's situation. the temperature it would reach. Like, say, if you had liquid helium in a yeah. steel container, like I think yes. it would get up to probably like at least 20 or 30 thousand psi. So like, if you kept pumping helium into the cartridges. In order to liquefy it, what would the pressure be like? I do feel like like part of me wants to say it would be obscenely high. Maybe somebody, somebody that knows how to do this more quickly, I could do it. I just don't want to do it, um, and I probably would do it wrong. <laughs> Anybody wants to answer the question of uh, what the pressure of helium would be inside of a vessel at room temperature in order to make it liquid? How much? How much pressure would we have to put inside of a CO two cartridge worth of helium to get it to liquefy? And how thick of a container would we need to contain it? The first person who answers the question, even just the first part of it, because that's what I'm curious about. Kevin can make a reward for the the thing. They get a the slowly container. warming cylinder of liquid helium. We will, yeah, we will celebrate your existence in the next podcast. We will ship you a container full of cold, boiling liquid helium. <laughs> and uh, to a container of your specification, like if you think we it's going to last for twenty thousand psi, we will cryogenically we'll, put we'll liquid it... helium into a CO two cartridge, and then we will mail it to you. <laughs> and we'll see if you think that if you're right, it won't blow up. If it will, <laughs> we'll never hear from if you. If they're again. right, it will. Oh, the thickness! Yeah. You might die if you answer this question. <laughs> it's possible that it won't even liquefy at room temperature. No. No, under the right amount of pressure. Yeah. Ha- yeah, that's. I that's guess. Like in, yeah, in, has, like, there has I to be. I can't find this though. It's it's because what it's it's pressure and temperature. What else? Temper and pre- temp- temperature, pressure, well, volume is part of. Pressure. According Maybe to Quora, volume? this guy claims that it can't be, but that's <laughs> some random. Guy. Oh, well, what does that mean though? Is it it physically can't be or? we cannot build anything to do it realistically. It's just like, I, I have to find a good phase diagram, but it's just in second. Okay, so this is what Reddit says about liquid nitrogen. They say, going by the phase diagram of nitrogen that Wolfram Alpha pulls up, it's impossible for nitrogen to be a liquid at room temperature because its critical point is at a lower temperature. So it turns, like it would turn solid. Hmm. I guess. Hmm. At room temperature, it can either be below the critical pressure as a gas or above that as a supercritical fluid well that's a liquid what are you talking about it has features of both liquids and gases i guys i think i'm not smart enough for this <laughs> kevin's like yeah in I conclusion that, i'm that, confused yeah i feel like there's kind of a weird thing going on i think i how so would it, it would just turn to a solid then it would skip liquid Oh, no, I, no, sorry. I think what you're saying is that, because if I see the phase diagram here, it could be that it's just above the, is that what they're saying? It's above the critical point? Yeah. Uh, so, like, the differentiation between liquid and sol- uh, liquid and gas is not, like, there isn't a differentiation anymore. Oh, so it's like you're literally compressing the gas so much that it's just, like, turning getting denser and denser until it's like turning basically a liquid well i know with co2 like the the critical point is i, I forget um like is that is that what it means you're forcing yeah you're literally forcing it to be a liquid like you're not cooling it down you're literally yeah. putting the the molecules together what but i think the way they fill it is probably with liquid co2 so they put liquid co2 into the vessel then they seal yeah. it 
and then like essentially when it's liquid or when it's when it is cryogenically cool cryogenically cooled the pressure inside of the tank is atmosphere like one atmosphere yeah like inside so of your at, liquid nitrogen doer yes it's so as as it heats up to room temperature that's when it starts converting from uh temperature into pressure so in order to fit that into the vessel at that temperature the pressure has to be higher well just because the, the reason i brought that up too is because i know with co2 uh it's normally yeah like 800 900 psi but if you heat it up to like 40 c uh, and I forget what pressure it goes up to. You, it just goes above the critical point, and you just get a supercritical fluid. So it's just mm. like I, I don't remember exactly the the details, but it's I think it's like two. It's the pressure is high enough that the gas density increases so that it's like a liquid, but it's still a gas. But the molecules like diarrhea don't want to be. They're not like interacting like a fluid would interact. So it has like it's like a gas with the density of a liquid. And I don't know if you keep increasing the pressure if you overcome that or you just get a really dense mm. <laughs> so you get a dense gas, not a liquid. Cause like a liquid is something the molecules are interacting. There's some like intramolecular forces, but I think it's right. like at room temperature I I could be wrong, but it's like at room temperature, or if it's above the critical point, it's like there's too much energy in the uh, uh, like in the molecules in order for them to like interact mm. with each other so you can like with pressure push them really close but they're still not truly interacting like a fluid would right. so you just get like this weird hybrid state i don't know people think magnets are confusing i uh this is not my specialty yeah i think that we have no idea what we're talking about <laughs> we have a general idea i in think we have like enough of an idea to lost. know that we don't know <laughs> So if anybody does know, I would this, really like this to. This person says about 710 atmospheres at 20 Celsius. For helium? What is this? A 710 nitrogen. ATM to PSI. Wait, wait, let me. That's let, saying 10,000? Uh, wait, for nitrogen? Yeah. So 10,000 PSI? That sounds right. Listen, I just spent the last like 10 minutes cherry picking my answers till I found something that seems right. So I take yes. that. Wait, no, that's right. That has to be right because they have to vent nitrogen tanks. Well, yeah. So nitrogen tanks exist at atmospheric pressure because they literally cannot build tanks to contain it. Well, yeah, and by venting it, they keep the they keep yeah. it cool. They keep it so the as the nitrogen evaporates or I guess evaporates uh, turns to a gas. It's pulling energy out of the out of the like the pool, and that energy pulling out of the pool is enough to keep it in a liquid form. That's like, so it's why water doesn't go above two twelve or one hundred C. Is because as it boils off, it's yeah. it's pulling heat away from the from the water, and so it cannot get hotter. So like the the more energy put into it, the faster it steams, but it will so not go above. I I will. I, so I just looked it up. I feel like I just the, had a revelation. The critical point allegedly of helium is 5.2 kelvin or negative 268 c uh and anything above that uh there will be no differentiation between the two phases so what would you what, where would you sort of consider like the point where it is sort of like a liquid the, the, the super critical point so it's like to get it to that pressure like or to that uh, density what would you what pressure would that require? Like, it, like nitrogen looks like it, to me. This seems there totally might be reasonable. A Ten thousand psi. Red yeah, that seems reasonable. But uh, for because that is not a pressure you but can I'll look contain up even easily. Like the and that's point why of of nitrogen it's probably way higher. The critical point of nitrogen is a hundred negative one hundred and fifty. So mm. it's like it. So helium might be like it's tens of way of PSI. higher than helium. Okay. I if somebody knows this answer, I'm gonna be very excited because I I I'm genuinely curious. Like I never really thought about this before until I realized how how ripped off you get buying helium in a tank because you don't get jack shit compared to anything no. that can liquefy. Like you get like you get way less gas. So, so I'm super I'm pretty curious. sure that uh, the answer is you can't. And I know it's kind of in I was gonna bring this up too. I'm pretty sure. But what would the like equivalent be? So it's like the problem is. It's like once it hits the supercritical state, the gas becomes super dense, and I think compressing it becomes really hard. Maybe, maybe like from a molar perspective, right? So, like, maybe it's like if you have so many moles, I mean, I, mean, I could be totally wrong, but like, what is sort of like an equivalent amount of helium? So, if a, if a CO2 cartridge has uh, like 16 grams, 
how would you sort of well, get the equivalent amount of helium into it? Not necessarily 16 grams, but... So I, I just wanted to, like, instead of answering your question, I'm going to just say something else. Uh, I think, because I remember hearing that nitrogen that's sold to you in the tank, it's just in a supercritical state, technically. Hmm. Because above its critical like, point of negative 150 C, it's just going to be a supercritical fluid. And it's like, you can't pack more... I think it's a kind of try, I, I think it's like trying to compress a liquid into a tank. You start you hit this Are point you where you just can't. There's no CO2? point. CO2. You're thinking of liquid ni of nitrogen. Yeah, it says nitrogen. Because hmm. the critical point says it's negative 150. So above that, it should be. I remember hearing that somewhere too that it could. It's technically a supercritical. It's in a supercritical state technically hmm. in the tank. No, because I don't know. You'd be able to fit more in there, right? But the the super critical the pressure would rise. Yeah, and I think it's like very diminishing your return. I think I could be wrong. We need a we need a we need a cryo gas specialist to answer our question. So sixty cubic feet of helium. Guess how much? How many grams of helium it is? Sixty cubic uh, feet at, of helium at atmosphere. Yeah, sixty. It so we, are we allowed to look up numbers? Is, now? Yeah, it, it's probably a couple grams. Sixty. It's actually a decent a cubic amount. Five Three, grams? 300 grams of helium. Okay. Yeah, I don't really, I guess I don't really know how big 60 cubic feet is. <laughs> I don't know. 20 I mean, by 30 it's, feet? If it's in yeah, really yeah, that sounds degrees, right. About like, you know, three or four feet high, but it's at like 2,000 PSI. So they compress 60 cubic feet into like a three cubic foot hmm. tank. Yeah. So it has yeah. like a 20 Isn't that weird how you can ratio? take like, you take the air in a balloon and you squish it down to a tank and it all of a sudden turns into like, way higher psi than you'd guess like i feel like that's not intuitive at all yeah like you know that the pressure is going to go up but by that much like yeah so i was going to say though my my feeling and i could be wrong is that it there is an amount of like quote unquote like super critical uh helium that you can just keep packing into a tank but i think it just i think the pressure just ramps up wildly for every extra amount you go and where it just hits an exponential curve where it's like you try to mm. add ten percent more, and the pressure goes up by ten thousand, and you're just like, okay, there's right, there's kind of right. no point. We can't fit anything. So you else. can keep compressing. I it think theoretically, it just sort of you could have a hundred million billion okay, so then psi I guess, I guess if you the, want. The best way to ask the question would be, how do you get like an equivalent amount of CO two? Mm. Like, like how what would the pressure be to get an equivalent amount of CO two? into a disposable cartridge in the same way that there's 16 grams of co2 so, so i like, would adjust it for molarity it like mol but yeah. okay. so molarity so how do you get the same number of moles of helium into a co2 cartridge I think you, what would that yeah i think in be? theory you can do it i just think that i wouldn't be surprised if they go so there's no material that will hold it <laughs> the the molar equivalent to 16 grams of co2 is it 50,000 PSI? Is it 100,000 PSI? <laughs> they send you just uh, a, a, a thing, like a tree trunk hunk of steel and just a little tube. I, in the... I mean, it would only have to be like an inch thick, right? Because steel can yeah. withstand like... No, but imagine... I don't know. 70,000. Yeah, that's true. That but it's like, imagine you start like to get more equivalent helium. You have to start stacking the, the steel around it to the point where that takes up volume. <laughs> Oh, the title of this podcast is The Only Thing Scarier Than Explosives. <laughs> is what? Yeah, it, why don't they just, like, make giant steel containers filled with liquid nitrogen? You have to just, yes, yeah, so you have to store the liquid nitrogen yeah. in. Well, and then, and then they like, can drop that on yeah. a on a terrorist right because it's basically like you know all an you explosive keep, you is, always have to keep the explosive is just you have to solid keep them cool you have to keep the bombs cryogenically cool all the time <laughs> and then you you heat it up it's on the plane defrosting on the way over yeah and then you yeah. drop it because you, you couldn't even have a pressure relief right because like what pressure relief would you have that you could seal up that would also withhold that pressure like it doesn't no, because once if once it cracked, it would instantly cool as it like boils off. Yeah, so you, you like a pressure relief. You couldn't yeah. have it. Would literally have to just keep the whole thing cryogenically frozen in this like sealed steel <laughs> tank. I guess explosions work because it's hot. Also, yeah, this is great. I love this terrorist talk <laughs> at the end of a podcast. This is so good. This is great. This is awesome. No one's. <laughs> You're just gonna hate that. <laughs> I mean, I think that we get our biggest like scientific breakthroughs th um, from people trying to figure out other ways to kill other people. Yeah, I do ways. agree.
GPS came from that. GPS literally came from from <laughs> trying to stop people from hurting us and to help us hurt people better. I we deserve everything bad that comes to us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, this. That was that was we did. We hardly talked about the hurricane. I'm kind of. I feel like we messed up. Oh, it was really bad, guys. I... Was it better? Was it worse than the squirrel bite? Oh man, it was like a, a thick, super critical state of squirrels <laughs> swirling around at 150 <laughs> miles an hour. I'm picturing it in my head right now. <laughs> squirrel NATO. They were. Is that how? That's how you really they were got there. Yeah. Solid or liquid squirrels. <laughs> They were sort of like pulverized into this weird Yeah, mush. almost like they went through an earthworm. Oh, no. <laughs> Devainer. Mm. We will see you guys next time. What Do we, do we, want, to, do we want to play uh, Agar IO again <laughs> with Nigel here? Oh, man. Do you want to play it for 20 minutes? But you can't do that twice in a row, can you? I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's better than doing nothing. What else could we do? Are we going to talk more? We could talk more. I'm not sure what people want from us. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know what they want either. Right, maybe, we, maybe maybe get or, like the, the discord and have them come help us in agar io on it. oh we could do that That's, that takes a bit of setup all right well yeah. thank you thank you to everyone who does support us on patreon it allows us to uh travel so we can record in-person podcasts um it allows us to what else do we do with the money that's it i think that's all <laughs> we do with the money that's yeah. literally it uh we did the last time we put everyone's name on the screen so th thank you to all these people who support wow, we, us okay. on Patreon. Look at that. Look how many of them. And there could be even more. And if you oh, yeah. signed Especially up. Especially these guys right here. Right there. That guy's my favorite. Kevin, you want to tell us about is. the tiers? What, whatever, what do we have to this offer? This guy sucks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what, are, what, are, what tiers do we have? We've got our basic tier, which gives access to the Discord server and the extra content. And we've got. I think the only other tier are there. I actually don't know how many tiers. No, I think have. there is. We have two tiers. I'm not getting any of this money, anyways. <laughs> if you want to support the podcast and you want extra content on the Patreon, where we sometimes record more, maybe that's just what we'll do today. So we'll record. We'll we'll uh, put that on the Patreon, and you get access to the Discord where you can ask questions and talk to other people. Uh, and that's it. That's all. That's all you get. And then for the Galaxy Brain, our advanced tier for premium users, you get a signed Polaroid every three months from one of us. Maybe we could put some pictures on the screen to show you. I don't. I feel like I'm trying to upsell. These, these are some is, of our favorites right here. Oh yeah, this one. This, this one. one he, this these one's are some really of my good. Least favorites right here. And you will get 10% off of the Safety Third merch. Actually, have you guys seen the Safety Third I merch? Saw let me show you. I let me show you. I'm going to show the stickers right now. I'm going to show the stickers. One second. Have you seen them, Nigel? No, but I'm very hungry. I actually think this might be one of the best things, one of the, the pieces of work that we should hmm. be the most proud of. I know that I'm proud of it. Are you ready for yes. three Safety Third stickers? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> so to show that one this is the first one. It says it's fine, and there's a man falling into a wood chipper. It says machine repair costs come out of your paycheck. It was, it's backwards. I'm trying to read it backwards. That's a, yeah. that's a gold one. We got our second sticker. That is toxic chemicals. If you die, we will hire someone else. <laughs> and there's a man with acid eating his entire body. <laughs> like, look at Nigel's got a cheeky little smile. Mm. He's what do you like, think of oh, that yeah. one? Would you put that in your office? I mean, something close to that has happened a few times. So a sign is probably useful. <laughs> and, and now for what I think might actually be one of the greatest stickers ever made. Are you ready for it? I get a drum roll. Danger. Open <laughs> hole. <laughs> I'm not going to describe this one to the audio listeners. If you want to see what this looks like, you just have to look at the last couple of minutes of the, the video podcast. Um, it just, it just says danger, open hole <laughs> and the vision, the, and that's it. That's all it says. <laughs> and there's a, there's a t-shirt too. So we've got a t-shirt. It's got the flaming dumpster on it. Um, when I, oh, I, mm, dang, I don't have it here. Um, we'll show it to you guys next time. It is a like multicolor discharge printing process. So it looks super vintage. Wow. It's well, got, Tell us more. No, please I don't. What's a, love, what is that? What's don't. A multi I don't need to know about your Oh, your my God. Do you want to get me started? I love. You already no. started.